Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to This Justin. Thank you for joining me today. In this video, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. It has been on an insane rally lately. So I wanted to give you my thoughts on two of the best Bitcoin mining stocks that you can buy right now. You're definitely going to want to stick around to the end because I've also got some huge price targets on Mara and Riot. So let's jump right in. All right, guys, before we get started today, subscribe to the channel for me. Hit that little bell so you get notified every time I post. There's also a link down in the description to my Patreon account. Come over and join the family. We've got an awesome community over there. You'll get access to the private Discord where we talk stocks. You'll get links to all of my portfolios so you can see exactly what I invest into. And then anytime I buy or sell a stock up to the second I do it, I send it out so you can follow along. I actually think the most valuable aspect of the Patreon, though, is all of the swing trade setups that I send out. Uh, so anytime I map a chart or I'm setting up a trade, I put that in front of you so you know what I'm looking to buy. And then I've also got a lot of education so that you can learn to identify these uh, trade setups and take your investing to the next level. So if that's something you're interested in, come over and join us. I think you'll get a ton of value out of it. We had some awesome trades hit their first price targets today, and we took some profit. So uh, day one squad, I also love you guys so much. Thank you for your support, guys. It is everything to me. Uh, but guys, let's get started. Uh, in today's video, we got to talk about Bitcoin, guys. It has been running for weeks now, and it just looks so hyper bullish. Uh, I also wanted to take some time to go over Mara and the Q2 earnings report and then take a look at the chart for Mara and Riot and give you my price prediction on both of those stocks because they are looking incredible. There's also something on the Bitcoin chart that I want to point out to you. I think it is very important and you do not want to miss it because it is very, very exciting. Uh, but guys, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing we're going to look at. So this is some highlights from their Q2 earnings report. Uh, for those of you guys that are new to the channel, I've made many, many videos on Mara where I go much further in depth on the company and what they do and their growth plan and all these different things. So if that's something you want to take a look at, uh, you know, see a more full in-depth analysis on Mara, I will link that right here so you can go check that out. Uh, first thing, guys, so there was a the quote by or a statement from Fred Thiel, their CEO. Uh, he said, in the second quarter of 2021, we continued to effectively scale our operations by increasing our hash rate 196% sequentially from 0.7 exahash at the end of the first quarter to approximately 2.09 exahash by the end of June. Guys, that's a pretty rapid expansion there. Uh, guys, the main reason I wanted to show you this earnings report right here is because Mara's production has been explosive over the last couple of months. And I think it is very important to remember why we invested into it, especially with how rapidly Bitcoin is developing right now. Um, next thing, guys. So the company produced 654 Bitcoin in Q2, bringing 2021 production to 846 newly minted Bitcoins. Then in July, Mara produced 442.2 Bitcoin. Guys, in Q1, they did like 200 Bitcoin in all of Q1. They averaged like two Bitcoin a day. In Q2, they did like 654 Bitcoin and averaged seven a day. That is an insane jump there, guys. For those of you guys that remember that first video we made on Mara, the reason why we invested in it is because that massive expansion of, a, of hash rate from now until Q2 of 2021. Uh, guys, Mara made that huge purchase, that crucial purchase back in December to pre-order all of those Bitcoin mining rigs. The chip shortage has had a huge impact on mining and graphics cards and you know chips. That has put a lot of Bitcoin mining stocks in a rough position because they haven't been able to get the rigs that they need to upgrade their fleets like they want to. Uh, Mara, when they made that purchase, guys, it was a massive amount of money. I'm talking like $200 million. I don't remember the exact amount, but that's why we invested in them because they are getting those mining rigs uh, delivered every single month, swapping out the old ones and replacing them with far superior, much more efficient mining rigs. So, uh, and this is just the beginning guys. They're at 2.09 as of today, and their goal is to get to 13.3. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of concern out there for, you know, difficulty rates and halving and all these different things. 
Uh, but by by doing that much expansion within your fleet, I think it dramatically offsets that and is extremely uh, you know important to note. All right, next thing here. Uh, so as of August 12th, the company produced 1,441 Bitcoins year to date. Uh, the total amount of Bitcoins held increased to 6,378 total. Uh, the other thing, guys, is I don't know if you guys remember, but when they purchased all those Bitcoin uh, back in, uh, you know, end of 2020 as well, and they bought them around that $30,000 mark. Uh, so obviously that was a very good investment. Uh, they got a very nice return on capital there because Bitcoin is approaching 50 grand uh, as of today. So, uh, you know, not only are they mining more, but they also bought and, and put all that money into those Bitcoins and those appreciate. So that's great. Uh, guys, let me jump back real quick uh, because I kind of skipped it and it's really important. In uh, in Q1, they did 200, right? In Q2, they did, uh, they did 654. And in July, they did 442 in one month. Guys, that is massive, massive jumps uh, in overall production. They are becoming more efficient, uh, more energy efficient as well, uh, you know, keeping their costs down and scaling their overall, uh, you know, output exponentially. So very important, guys. Uh, next thing here, guys, uh, before we jump into the charts. So uh, the non-GAAP income from operations was 20.1 million or 21 cents per share, uh, an increase from 8.3 million or 10 cents per share in Q1. Uh, and then Q2 revenue of 29.3 million increased from 9.2 million in Q1. Uh, guys, one thing I will say uh, that I think we also got to keep in mind is uh, the, the Bitcoin uh, sell-off or the, the big correction really kind of started at the end of May and really only turned around at the end of July. So their Q3 numbers might be a little lower than today maybe uh but you know i don't know because maybe the the production in bitcoin will far outweigh it uh because they produce so much but yeah you know definitely going from a, a fifty thousand fifty five thousand dollar average price down to a 30 for a couple of months like right in the dead center of your quarter pretty much that could affect the numbers for q3 but even if it does i don't think it's going to be that big of a deal and i think that their output uh you know consistently increasing will outweigh that anyway so just something to keep in mind uh, as of June 30th, uh, the average cost of Mars mine Bitcoin was 41935 An average carrying value of its mine Bitcoin was 29844 So a lot of really great stuff, guys. Honestly, I, I love seeing this. Uh, you know, there was a guy a couple of months back on Seeking Alpha that wrote a, a short report on Mara. Uh, he was saying that the CapEx, uh, you know, from the purchase of all those miners was going to keep them from being profitable and, you know, reaching free cash flow positive, uh, you know, for years to come. And they would never get there because he thought that that cost was a continuous fixed cost that was always going to be there. Uh, I actually started talking with him in the comments and I was trying to explain to him, dude, no, that was a one time thing. And those miners are going to come in every single month until they reach that hash rate and he kept saying how they're always going to have to replace their fleet which yes obviously but that was why they put so much money in at one time to get the top of the line you know miners uh you know moving forward and those will be delivered all the way until the middle of 2022 so it just just kind of uh you know something to keep in mind guys very powerful company a lot of things that they're doing right uh obviously there is risk here right you know if bitcoin crashes if the uh you know us government shuts down mining whatever there's a lot of risk uh you know as well but i think the the upside far outweighs the downside in this situation um okay guys let's take a look at the bitcoin chart uh, this is pretty important stuff here, guys. Um, so as you guys can see, this is the four hour uh, on Bitcoin. I just want to spend a second here. Uh, so for those of you guys that are not familiar with the uh, the big sell off or correction that started back at the end of May, uh, you know, we just recently got out of that, uh, you know, towards the end of July, around the 20, 21st of July. Uh, but ever since then, guys, it has been in an absolutely insane rally, uh, you know, going from a low point of like 29,000 uh, reaching the highest high of the correction up there at like $50,500. Uh, so massive appreciation in a very short amount of time. That's what Bitcoin can do, guys. Uh, you know, it's over the 200-day moving average on the four-hour. Uh, you know, the one big thing here, guys, uh, there was triple bearish divergence on both the MACD and the RSI. Uh, as you guys can see here, not much of a follow-through price action after that. Uh, that is a very big sign of strength, guys. When you have, uh, you know, triple 
bearish divergence on both oscillators on not only the four hour but the daily and you just don't have uh you know sellers coming in to push that price down dramatically uh you know because you have too many buyers there pulling it back up very impressive you can see that it is really respecting this trend channel uh you know using that heart line as support support uh, you know, in here, resistance, resistance, and it just got rejected at that heart line twice, uh, and then came back to back test the bottom of the channel, uh, you know, as a demand line, guys. Then it painted a four hour bullish engulfing, and we are getting some nice follow through price action. Uh, guys, if you can see this thing break that heart line, you could see much, much higher prices. Uh, your RSI currently sitting at 53, just kind of breaking up through that neutral zone. Um, but let's jump over to the daily. Uh, guys, one thing I want to point out, as you can see, this $50,000 level, that's more of a psychological resistance level. Uh, it wasn't that serious. It's not a major critical inflection point uh, like these support resistance levels down here. Uh, that's why you're starting to see just a little bit of, uh, you know, stalling in Bitcoin's price. But I think it will have no problem breaking through that $50,000 level. As you can see, there's just not anything there. You know, there's no major highs. There is a couple candle closes. Uh, you know, there's a candle high close here, candle low close, you know, back in April, March, February, things like that. Uh, but guys, really the next major level on the Bitcoin chart is up here between 57.4 and 58.3. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the next level I think it's going to. And I think once you even break 50 and you can hold there for a second, you'll get there really, really quickly. Uh, this was a big development as well, guys, breaking that supply line. Uh, you know, that was manufactured back in April was was obviously very impressive. Uh, but guys, look at the major moving averages right here on the daily. Uh, you know, you're getting that that 200 day moving average uh, to cross under that 20 day moving average. You're getting that confluence, though. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people use moving averages for the the death cross. I don't really, you know, take too much weight onto that. I more so look at the convergence uh, of the moving averages. So you've got all three of them pointing up. Uh, you're getting that tight, uh, you know, constriction of those moving averages coming in and the price is getting back over it. And that's when you should see it fan out. So very powerful stuff there, guys. Uh, next thing here, again, you had triple bullish divergence on the MACD and the RSI, and you just had no follow through, uh, you know, downside. So uh, you know, I don't think there's there's very many bears right now. At least I wouldn't be bearish on Bitcoin. Uh, next thing, guys, that this is very important. Your RSI is currently sitting at 63. Uh, in the Bitcoin, uh, you know, market, these assets can go to overbought up there at like 80, 90 on the RSI. Uh, and if and if Bitcoin does that, it could see much much higher prices. So, uh, you know, it's it's above 60, but it's not above 70, and that's like that perfect level. Uh, of the bullish control zone that you want to be in. So um, now let's jump over and take a look at the three day uh, because this is something that that is painted on the daily, but I just took it off so we could look at that 50, uh, you know, level. Uh, but guys, this is a beautiful bullish shark pattern, uh, you know, that really kind of ushered in that rally. This structure right here could take you, uh, you know, to all time highs and beyond. If you take, uh, you know, your FIB extensions go from the high to the lowest low of the correction, uh, you know, right around there. Uh, you can see here, guys, I mean, the, the 1272 takes you all the way up to, uh, you know, 74,000, 1414 up there, almost at 80, and the uh, 16188 at 87. Uh, but guys, that's what I want to look at on the next chart. As you guys can see, though, uh, again, RSI at 63, uh, building a ton of positive momentum, uh, you know, overall there on the three day. So uh, the weekly, though, this is what I wanted to show you. Guys, this is a textbook bearish a b equals c d pattern uh this is actually a structure that scott carney actually identified i didn't identify it uh for those of you guys that do not know who scott carney is he is an absolute genius uh, i have learned so so unbelievably much from him uh you know he's the one that really brought the harmonic trading uh you know some of the most popular patterns like the bath the shark you know over uh, and brought it more mainstream. He's written four books on harmonic trading and harmonic patterns and how to trade them and things like that. I highly, highly recommend reading them. Uh, I've got them over at the Patreon, uh, but you can also go to harmonictrader.com, sign up for a basic membership and all of those books are, are over there. Uh, he's also got a lot of free resources as well, so I recommend it. Uh, but with that being said, shout out to Scott Carney. Uh, you're the man. 
Uh, but guys, what what the what this is though the the context of this and the reason why this is so powerful, guys. You had your first wave up, uh, then you had a sixty percent retracement, uh, and then you're starting your second wave, guys. And this uh, this C to D leg here at the one six one eight will take you to eighty seven thousand five hundred and eighty six dollars. That's probably where Bitcoin's going. Uh, one thing you got to keep in mind though, guys, this is not something that happens overnight. As you guys can see here. Uh, you know, just to get to the first structure, the first leg from A to B took you 399 days. So it took you over a year uh, to, to get there. So this will probably take around the same amount of time uh, because, you know, on those patterns, you want them to be around the same time, same, you know, length, same price. Uh, other thing here, guys, is look at this. You just had your second bar of positive momentum build on the histogram next thing is your uh you know rsi on the weekly is at 59.22 so it's testing that 60 level uh but it's still there in the bullish control zone guys this thing could run and get you know up into the 80 the 90 overbought level and you could absolutely see that 87,000, uh you know within the next year year and a half so huge guys uh, again obviously it's not going to be a straight line up there's going to be a lot of chop in between uh but you know on the weekly chart guys i mean you can see this is what happened uh you know since the covid crash and you you know for those of you guys that keep up with bitcoin so very very huge guys that's why i am so pumped on these bitcoin mining stocks and that's why i'm so pumped on crypto because of how good this looks uh the total market cap for crypto also has a similar structure that looks insane so definitely recommend looking into this guys last thing i'll say guys before we jump in and look at the mar chart if i was the one that identified this structure i would be a lot more hesitant and uh and speculative uh but the fact that scott carney was the one that identified and mapped out this structure gives me a lot more faith because he has faith in it uh guys he's been analyzing charts and mapping out patterns and identifying structures for decades and he has made millions and millions of dollars doing it uh so a very reliable source now obviously that is a huge assumption uh but i absolutely think that it will go to that eighty-seven thousand. 500 within the next two years uh now you know we should probably wait before we even get back to all-time highs before we start looking at 87k uh but i digress i definitely think it'll get there uh you know very very likely um okay so let's go ahead and look at mara um guys we've looked at this chart before very very good looking chart right now guys i sent this out a few weeks back in the patreon as a trade setup uh, as you guys can see we have that initial rally starting back here in november uh ran all the way up to that high point at that 5775 in the beginning of april uh which was also the pattern completion zone of that bearish cipher pattern that ushered in that sell-off uh, now we did break through that demand line back tested it at a, as a supply line uh, before falling down and finding support at a very critical inflection point uh, historically you can see here some lows from 2017 uh, 2015 2015 and then that initial low from back there in 2012 so a uh, critical area guys then we had that big momentum shifting structure uh you you might be able to call it like a three rising valleys but it, it's accumulation guys that's what we look for uh you know more mark participants own the asset today than back here at the middle of may when it found its bottom uh we had that first bottom second bottom which was a little bit of a higher low that was also the first time it had tested that 200-day moving average since clear back here. Um, and then, guys, look at the that confluence of those major moving averages. They're real tight and uh, all pointing up right there under the price. The last time that it did that was clear back here in November, guys. And what did it do? It went absolutely insane running to unbelievably high prices from the level it was at. Uh, the, the other thing, guys, is you've also got some XABCD stuff going on here. Uh, you've got the A, B, C, D. Uh, I'll map it out for you so you can see. So you've got the X to A to B to C, and you are developing your C to D leg, which puts you uh, at the 886 up there around that 5307 level. Uh, guys, the reason why I'm showing you this bearish bat pattern right here is because Scott Carney has a method called the bat 
action magnet move. Uh, you've probably heard of it, uh, heard me talk about it in other videos. Uh, but pretty much what that says, guys, is on a bat pattern, whether it's bullish or bearish, it doesn't matter. Uh, once you break the 50% level on your C to D leg, there is a very high probability that you're going to the 886. Uh, so you're right there at that 50% level from your high to low. Uh, you know, it's not, cool. let me move that up right there. 886, uh, confluent with the 5307, uh, which is also, if we go way back here, guys, uh, some candle high closes from clear back in 2013 before it went absolutely nuts. So a uh, very, very critical uh, you know, area as well. So guys, that's where it's headed if we break this level here, which it is currently doing. Uh, there's not much resistance in between that. Uh, you know, we've got that one high from back here in 2016, where you may get some price stall just like you did here uh, to come back and back test that level. But nonetheless, that 5307 is exactly where you want to go. Uh, even if you just look at it, guys, like a Bolkowski, uh, you know, double bottom pattern, you can take it and you can say, okay, come down, map it to here, and you use your measured move. You're about right there, guys. I mean, it is dead on confluent with your measured move. So uh, that is where you're probably headed next is 5307 as long as you break this. Now, you may just blow right past it uh, to go test it, or you may back test it depending on how uh, you know strong Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is performing. Uh, other thing, guys, is look at your uh, look at your RSI on the daily. You're at 68, right there in that 60 to 70 range. Very powerful stuff. It could absolutely see much higher levels and go much higher prices. Uh, your positive momentum, you are starting to build. You had one little baby uh you know histogram bar of negative momentum before quickly flipping back uh you know you're just getting straight bearish con or bullish convergence no divergence as of, as of this point in time uh just straight convergence now let's take a look at the weekly guys uh oh yeah look at that you had your second uh green positive momentum on the histogram painted today uh you just had a gap up and you closed over that level uh and your RSI is currently just over 60. Uh, guys, th this is so good. You do not want to, uh, you know, you don't want to ignore stuff like this, guys. These are everything you want to see in a stock chart uh, when you are looking for low risk areas, uh, you know, at critical inflection points after a big sell off, uh, you know, in an asset that is pretty dang strong so uh that's my price target guys is that 5307 and honestly you could see even much higher prices after that uh you know if you take your fibs go and then you can check your you know 113 1272 you know 1414 1618 but let's get to 5307 first um but all right guys let's take a look at riot uh we'll wrap it up um this is another one we've looked at guys so so good. Uh, you know, you had that big bullish Gartley, guys. I like this one, honestly, better than the Mara chart because of the big Gartley. Uh, the Gartley is one of the most reliable structures on any stock chart. Uh, same thing, though, guys. Very homogenous market. Uh, momentum shifting structure. Uh, you know, finding support at the PCZ at a very critical level. You had an initial high from back here in November 2017, uh, 2014, 2014. 2013, 2012, uh, you, you get it. Very critical area. Uh, finding support, running uh, to the top of the range, coming down as your confirmation low, which was also a higher low uh, with a doji reversal, guys. And then you're now testing it again. Uh, same thing. Look at the confluence of those moving averages, even tighter than what was on the Mara chart. And you just tested the 200-day moving average not once, not twice, but three times and held it as support every time. Uh, the one time that you did fall below it, you gapped right back over it, guys. A ton of strength, ton of strength. Uh, you are now also starting to build, uh, you know, positive momentum after a small little, uh, you know, negative momentum histogram island. Uh, that that positive momentum, you know, could usher in much higher levels. And look at the gap here, guys. Once you break that forty dollar level, look at where you're headed. There is nothing there, nothing. Last time you broke it, you went straight to 67 or 60, yeah, 68. Uh, so why would you not do it uh, this time? So a lot of upside, guys. Your RSI right there at 60.49. 
that is exactly where you want to see it. Um, if we take a look at the three day, um, and then the same thing with the uh, moving averages. Last time it had, uh, you know, had that type of convergence or confluence was back in November before it went nuts. So again, homogenous. Uh, you know, same thing. Building positive momentum. Uh, RSI fifty four. Uh, let's check the weekly. Yep, same thing. RSI fifty four. Uh, yeah, guys, everything is is exactly what you want to see. Uh, the other thing I will mention is if you take your fibs and you go from your high to your low, uh, you look at where your 1414 is, guys. Uh, you know, at that $105.32, confluent with that level, which was also a very, very nice level from back here, candle low close in 2011. A uh, candle will close in November uh, 2010, and then a, a little stall area where it held support in 2011. So, a uh, lot, a of, lot of confluence on these charts, guys. A lot of areas that that, that work together. So, uh, you know, once you break that uh, that 68, uh, you know, 80 at the top of the structure, and then you're in price, uh, you know, d pretty much price discovery. I mean, those levels, uh, you know, back there, there's not a lot of highs because it was all downside. But, uh, you know, one two seven two one four one four one six one eight. Uh, but again, let's get to that 6817 level first. But those are my prices, guys. I think there is a lot of upside here. Definitely don't ignore these. If you don't own them, go check them out. Uh, but that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. This video is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not a licensed stockbroker. Always do your own research and due diligence. Come join us at the Patreon. I'll see you in the next one. I love y'all. Peace.